Hiligaynon. In the previous videos, we discussed multiplexers. In this video, we'll add two little letters to the front of that name. Not surprisingly, demultiplexers perform the opposite function of multiplexers. They route one data input to one of many possible outputs. The abbreviated name for this device is DMUX. Let's start with the simplest possible option, a 1 to 2 DMUX. Here, one data input signal, named D, is routed to one of two possible output lines, A and B. Just like the MUX, a select switch, S, is needed to choose the output line. When S equals 0, output B is selected, so D is sent to line B. When S equals 1, output A is selected. For this design, the unselected output line is forced to equal 0. So, the full behavior of the circuit is summarized in this truth table. In the top half, S indicates that we are selecting B. Notice that B matches the input D value in both rows. This also means that A is unselected and forced to equal 0. In the bottom half, S equals 1, so output A is selected, and B always equals 0. A common mistake I see with students is that they think when an output line is selected, it automatically takes a value of 1. This is not true. Selecting an output line means that it is chosen to take the input data value, which could be either a 0 or a 1. This next schematic is for a 1 to 4 DMUX. One input data signal is routed to one of four possible output lines. In order to choose between four unique options, two select signals are necessary. A useful strategy is to name the output lines with a decimal number taken from the binary select code. Notice, for example, how setting the select inputs to 1 and 0 chooses output line number 2. If you have watched the prior videos, the schematic which uses AND gates as filters should come as no surprise. Notice how D is wired directly to each of these AND gates. The other inputs come from the select bits in such a way that three of the AND gates are forced output zero. Just the one specially selected AND gate is allowed to reflect the value of the input D. For the example shown here, the binary code for the select bits reads 0, 1. This converts to decimal 1, so output Y1 is selected. Therefore, the input D value of 1 passes through here. Meanwhile, all the other inputs are 0. Let's have a quick learning check. A 1 to 4 DMUX, same as the previous slide, has inputs of S0 equals 0, S1 equals 1, and D equals 1. What is the output? Pause the video until you write down an answer. The answer is 0, 1, 0, 0. The select code is 1, 0. Remember to read from most significant to least significant bit, which converts to decimal 2. Therefore, output bit 2 is selected, and takes on the value of the input data, which is 1. All other bits in our design must equal 0. This slide shows device symbol examples of four similar combinational circuits we have covered recently, encoder, decoder, MUX, and DMUX. It is useful to see them displayed together because it's easy to get their operations confused. On the top row, we see a sort of funneling action with many input lines reducing to a few output lines. On the bottom row, we see an expansion with many more outputs than inputs. With encoders and decoders on the left, the purpose is to convert between binary and some other form. With muxes and demuxes, there is no conversion, but instead data routing. To perform data routing, select signals are needed you can see those on the right side, labeled A slash B prime. But 
you don't see those with the encoder or decoder. Keep in mind that these devices shown are specific examples within their general categories. For example, this DMUX is a one input to two output 4-bit DMUX. We could have variants, such as having additional outputs C and D, or using 1-bit numbers. We could also have an enable input on any of these devices. On this slide, only the decoder is shown with an enable. The important thing is to understand the general purpose of each of these categories and then be able to identify the specific operation by examining the available inputs and outputs. To see what I mean, let's look at each example here. First, we have an encoder. An encoder, in general, converts from some other form into binary. In this specific device, several input lines are named using decimal numbers and three output lines. That output must be a binary number. Remember, an encoder always outputs in binary. And we know that three bits allows us to count up to decimal seven. So it is a reasonable guess that this is a line encoder where one active input line determines the output binary code. Next, we have a decoder. A decoder in general converts from binary into some other form. We see four input lines, but three of them are named using the same starting letter. So it seems that there's a three-bit binary code which will activate one particular output line, plus an enable input which can deactivate the whole circuit. Next, we see a multiplexer. A MUX in general is a data selector. So we identify the select lines. Here, there's just one. This means there must be only two sets of input data. Thanks to this naming convention, it is obvious that those inputs are named A and B, and they each have four bits. One of those will be chosen to pass through to the output four bits. Finally, we see a demultiplexer. A DMUX chooses one output line to pass the data onto. Again, we notice just one select line, so there must be only two possible choices. Again, this is apparently a 4-bit DMUX because of the naming convention. So, all four bits of D will be routed to all four bits of either A or B. Will you be able to identify the function of every logic circuit device in this manner? No. You will certainly encounter some devices in the future that you have not been taught before. In that case, you look up the documentation or ask questions. But I hope you can see the importance of notation strategies to communicate the overall operations. And I also hope you can see the value of understanding the general categories of logic circuits first, then using that to deduce specific behavior.